Welcome into the Alabama Football Report. I am your host today, Chris Daughtry, coming to you live for A Day. It's not your normal A Day. It's going to be offense versus defense today, something we haven't seen, you know, while Nick Saban was around. You know, it was always Crimson versus White, but today they're mixing it up for Kalen DeBoer's first A Day with the Crimson Tide. I want to hear from you guys, though, in the comments section right now. Nick Saban in his first year got about 90,000 people at his first A Day. Over or under, O for over, U for under in the comment section right now. Let me know what you guys think. Are there going to be over or under 85,000 people at A Day today? I think it's going to be over. I've seen some pictures so far. It doesn't look like there's about 85,000 quite yet, but it is a hot day in Tuscaloosa. So, you know, maybe there's a couple people that stayed at home today to watch it on TV. The game is also going to be on, you know, regular television. So, you know, it's a whole lot easier than it was, say, like last year when the game was on uh, SCC Network Plus. But let me know right now in the comments section. We've got 90 people right off the jump watching so far. Let me know. Over, over or under 85,000 people at A Day. I'm going to give some shout outs here. Red Eye says under. So far from the pictures I've seen, it looks like under. But, you know, people got to file in. People are going to be at Galettes for the first little bit of the game. They're going to be down there in his free Ramajamas. Ty Man says over. It's a new era for Alabama football. Kalen DeBoer's first A-Day game. You know, I really hope the fans show out. I really hope the fans show out. They sure did for Nick Saban. And, you know, the fans got to be accountable. Fans got to be a little bit accountable in this new era because... You know, after that loss versus Michigan, there was a lot of negativity, and I, you know, I was I was pretty negative about some things. There were some certain players I think, you know, you guys were too pretty negative about certain guys on the team. Some guys not here anymore, um, but you know, it kind of is what it is. Some the fans need to be held accountable, and I think if we can pack out the stadium for the A Day game today, that would be awesome. Ty Man says over, Red Eye says under. Let me know in the comment section, guys. When you guys comment, what it does for the YouTube algorithm, it gets more people, you know, pushes it out when there's more people in the chat going. YouTube says, hey, you know, things are going on here. They push it out to more people, and we get more people watching here at the Alabama Football Report. We're going to go over a couple things today. We're going to go over... um, the depth charts, just kind of how things are going to shake out a little bit. It's not perfect. It's not exactly right. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see today what, what ends up happening. With the offense versus defense, I think it's pretty cool, though, that they're doing it this way because we'll kind of get to see some mixing and matching. You know, what happens if Malachi Moore goes down? Who's going to go in for Malachi Moore? Whoever it is is going to, in a real game, going to be going up against real number ones. So why would, you know, some of those guys go up against number twos? So it's going to be real, you know, one-on-one competition today. As well today, guys, I am going to be your host today, and I'm going to be producing the show. This is the first time I've ever been hosting the show for the Alabama Football Report, any of the shows. I'm going to be doing both today. So if I'm a little bit slow on moving the graphics and things like that, just bear with me. Um, But we're going to have a lot of fun today on the Alabama football report. All right, next question. I want to know who you guys think will be the A-Day MVP today. Let me know in the comments section. We've got 115 people watching. Let me know in the comments right now, who do you guys think will be the A-Day MVP? I think there's a flurry of options. I think most of them are going to be on offense, obviously, you know, maybe there's somebody on defense, especially maybe some of those defensive backs that can maybe make, you know, a couple plays to kind of swing it over to their, their side. Um, but for the most part, I think it's going to be an offensive player. If I were to make my prediction, and don't twist this for it to make it me being anti-Jalen Milrow, I think it might be Ty Simpson. I really do think it could be Ty Simpson. And I'll give you my logic. Jalen Milrow's kind of supposed to be that guy. He's already supposed to be that guy. If he goes off, great. That's what he was supposed to do. Ty Simpson has kind of got that chip on his shoulder. You know, he's been in this program for a few years now and, you know, has, he's 
didn't even get the one start against USF last year. That was Tyler Buckner. The guy, I, I don't know what the coaching staff was thinking there. Bird in the comments section right now saying Justice Haynes, that's a good one. I really like Justice Haynes. I think this running back group is going to be really good for Alabama this year. I think it's going to be an upgrade from last year from um, Jace McClellan and Roy Dell Williams. I really think Justice Haynes and, and Jam Miller should have got more run last year. I think some of that pass pro, you know, they got blown up a couple of times, especially Justice Haynes on those, you know, passing plays when they were supposed to be protecting. But, yeah, that's what happens when you're a freshman. You know, you're not perfect ever when you're a freshman. You know, had Caleb Downs last year was pretty perfect, but it's a little bit different kind of position to play. But let me know. Keep, keep in the comments section right now. Let me, not, let me know who you guys think is going to be the A-Day MVP for Alabama today. And while you guys are getting in the comments section, I want to tell you a little bit about our sponsor today, Game Time. Spring is here, which means we have baseball to watch along with playoff basketball and hockey, and you shouldn't have to miss any of the action because the ticket prices with Game Time. You can get killer last-minute deals and all-in prices for your next big event. There's nothing more frustrating than spending time searching for the best tickets prices, which is why you should give Game Time a shot. They have flash deals. They have zone deals. They have concerts. They have the lowest prices guaranteed. If you are trying to catch a game, you're trying to catch a concert, a comedy show. I love going to comedy shows, and I use Game Time every single time to do that. Um, game Time, use the, download Game Time and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. I love using Game Time. It gives you views from your seat, just like you see that middle one right there for the Alabama baseball game later on today. That one's starting at 5 p.m. Central Time. You get views from your seats before you purchase, so there's no surprises when you show up. Plus, hidden fees suck. Nobody likes hidden fees. You know, you go on some other ticketing apps, you know, they say it's like $20 for the ticket, and then by the time you get to the end, it's like $30, $40 for a ticket. Game Time does not do that to you. Game Time gives you all-in prices options, so you really know how much the tickets are going to cost. It's the best place to find last-minute seats. Download the Game Time app and create your account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your per first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, create your account and redeem code CHATSPORTS. That's C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, -S CHATSPORTS, for $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Now, the next thing I want to bring up from you guys Kalen DeBoer now. It's his first season. Let me know right now in the comments section what's your confidence level in it. I think it should be pretty high, to be honest with you. I think it should be pretty high. I think Kalen DeBoer is going to be just a, a great coach for this team. Not a lot of people think that, but, you know, he, um, he came from Washington. He had, he had a long, long road to get here to Alabama. Clarice saying nine in there. He had a long road to get to Alabama. He's at Fresno as the OC. And a little note for you guys as well. This is not the first time he has coached in Bryant-Denny Stadium. In 2017, he was the OC of Fresno, and um, they came to Tuscaloosa. Obviously, Alabama beat the crap out of Fresno. I think the score was like 41 to 10 or something like that, but, you know, it is what it is. You can't expect Fresno to really come in and do much against an Alabama team, especially in 2017. I mean, those teams were absolutely insane. Spencer saying nine in the comment section as well. There was a lot of talk when he originally came in about his recruiting and, you know, him not being from the South, if he was going to be able to coach in the South and recruit in the South. And so far, man, he has shown everybody that he's going to be able to recruit. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Um, he's already landed a bunch of big-time recruits. Ryan Williams, especially, he was the, the very first one. You know, he decommitted, I mean, minutes 
after Nick Saban announced his retirement. And Kalen DeBoer had to come in and, you know, be the guy to get him back, which is something that a lot of people said he couldn't do. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of uh, recruits there today as well. And I would not doubt, I would not doubt at all if somebody ended up committing after the A-Day game today, maybe tomorrow, maybe later tonight. I wouldn't doubt it at all. Hi, man, the Buckeye says 10. Keep the comments flowing. What's your confidence level in Kalen DeBoer? Now, we do have a super chat menu for you guys today. We always do this on our live shows. Any of our watch parties will have a super chat menu. This is how it looks. Any super chat today. I'll do a beer cheers for you. I got a couple beers right here. And you know what, guys? I'm trying to get loose. I'm trying to have a fun time. Love Alabama football. Always like to get a little rowdy for a game, even if it is a day. I also mixed together a, a yellow hammer drink for you guys. I got it right here. 20 or excuse me, $10. I'll do a yellow hammer shot for you guys. Um, I found it. I went, I looked up yellow hammer recipe from Galette's. Everybody loves Galette's. Galette's is the place to go get your yellow hammer. I looked up their recipe, made it exactly how they made it. So we got our yellow hammer shots for you today. A $20 super chat. I will do a beer bong. I got it right down here. Got the beer bong for you guys. And I'll put those down for any $20 super chats and if we are so lucky to get a $50 super chat today, it says do the fight song. I will sing the fight song for you guys, and I'll make it a little bit more fun. I will also do a beer bong for you guys for a $50 super chat. I'm super excited. I really hope, you know, you don't got a super chat, of course, obviously, but it does make it a lot of fun here when you do here on the Alabama Football Report. And a couple other things you guys can do for us to help support the show. Everything right here is free. You don't have to do anything that costs any money. Just go like the video for me. Share the video on any social media. You can tag me on Twitter at uh, Chris Chat Sports. You know, share it on Facebook or co and comment also as much as possible. You know, really help us out here on the Alabama football report. All right. Next topic for you guys. The transfer portal is coming up and Alabama needs to fill some spots. Alabama needs desperately to fill some spots on this team at a couple different spots. So I want you guys in the comment section right now, what position does Alabama need to add in the transfer portal the most? Give me one position. I know there's a few. Kalen DeBoer talked about it the other day as well. But let me know right now in the comment section where you guys think Alabama needs to improve in this spring transfer portal window. It opens up on the 15th, so that's two days from now. And obviously, some of our guys can go in the portal too. So we'll, we're going to have to wait to see who, who of our guys, excuse me, goes in the portal. And we're also going to have to pick up some other places. There's, I think DB, I think, is the biggest need for us. We definitely need some more offensive line. Dustin says kicker. I don't know. We'll see. Connor, or yeah, Connor Talty is probably going to get a lot of the kicking reps today. So, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes for him. But Lake Hay says offensive line. I absolutely agree with you on that one. I absolutely agree on that one. Let's go here. So, the scoring, like I said, is going to be a little bit different. It's not Crimson versus White this year. It's going to be offensive versus defensive. So they kind of put this out this morning, and I'm going to explain it to you the best I can. The offensive scoring is going to be the exact same as a regular game. A touchdown is six points, extra point is one, field goal is three. But the defense also gets an opportunity to score today. So if they get a turnover, a takeaway, they, the defense gets seven points. If they get a three and out, it's three points. If they force the offense to a missed field goal, it's two points. If they force a punt, it's two points. And this part's a little bit confusing. Four down stops. The defense also gets points for four down, fourth down stops. And I believe this is how it works. It's, it says YL, so I don't know if that's yard line or yards lost, but I think it's yard lines. So the defense gets six points 
if they get a four down stop on the offensive side of the 50. So from a safety all the way to the 49-yard line, the defense gets six points if it's fourth down and they get a stop. If it's from the 50-yard line to the defense's 26-yard line, they get five points. If the defense gets a four-down stop in the red zone, they get four points. So it's a little confusing, I know, but I, I kind of equate it to the uh, blue-collar points that Alabama does in basketball. I think that's kind of how they're going to be doing it. <laughs> Yay saying our, our DB room is stacked, and I agree that the talent is there, but the depth isn't necessarily there. Alabama needs to pick up some spots um, in, the, in the DB room, and we can kind of go into that right now for the uh, kind of, you know, loose depth charts that we have for you guys. And this is, you know, for the most part, we kind of we got it, but in some of those DBs, you know, defensive line, we've kind of probably got a little bit. Um, but some of them, we don't, we don't really know how it's going to shake out. This is how the quarterback room shakes out for Alabama. Jalen Milrow, obviously, he's QB1. There is no quarterback competition. Get that out of your head. Ty Simpson is not going to make a run when it comes to play to be, you know, quarterback run. If God forbid something happens to Jalen Milrow, yes, absolutely, Ty Simpson's going to be that guy. And I think Ty Simpson can, Ty Simpson can absolutely you know, be that guy for Alabama if he's called upon, if he is needed. Got Austin Mack transfer from Washington, followed Kalen DeBoer. The day after Austin Mack, you know, announced he was going to be coming to Alabama, um, um, Julian Sayan ends up transferring out. He goes to Ohio State. Dylan Lonergan sticks around as well. I'm putting him at that quarterback four spot now just because there was a lot of hype for Austin Mack in the spring. I still love Dylan Lonergan. Do not get me wrong. I love Dylan Lonergan, but, you know, those, those guys right there, they, really they don't matter. They don't matter at all. They're not going to be seeing the field unless it's like absolutely wild cleanup time against an absolute trash team. Moving over to the wide receivers here, left to right, Jeremy Bernard, also a transfer in from Washington. I am going to love to see what happens with him. Um, Kendrick Law, uh, Kobe Prentice, Jalen Hale's injured. He's not going to be participate, participating today. Prob I mean, he's, he's been out for a couple of weeks now. We still don't know ex the exact extent to his knee injury. But, um, you know, hopefully he'll be good by the 2024 season. A guy that really sticks out to me as well, Emmanuel Henderson. You know, he came in as a running back recruit and – ends up making the switch to the wide receiver room, and he hasn't gotten a lot of, a lot of run there, but I really think he is going to be a guy for Alabama this year that's going to mix in really, really well. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, he ends up being a top three receiver for Alabama this year. Caleb Odom, getting a ton of hype so far in the spring, comes in as a, as a tight end, ends up almost immediately – Switching over to the wide receiver room, everybody immediately was like, no, this guy's a wide receiver. He's not a tight end. He's a wide receiver. Uh, Ryan Williams, not yet with the team. Arian Hampton as well. He's a freshman. Rico Scott, Amari Jefferson. This Alabama wide receiver room is going to be interesting to see how Kalen DeBoer uses them this year because I think a lot of these guys can do a lot of different things and they're going to be versatile. To the running back room, here we go. Justice Haynes, finally, the guy for Alabama, getting those RB1 reps. I said it before, and I'll say it again. I think he should have been, I think he should have got more reps last year. I mean, you saw him in the Michigan game. He came in in that second half, was absolutely lights out, and then they just took him out. I don't understand it. Jam Miller, also going to be another guy on this team who's going to get a lot of run. I think he's going to be a really, really good. And watch out for Richard Young. I think Richard Young, he hasn't been talked about a lot, and it's understandable. The other two guys, you know, Jam Miller's been in the system for a couple of years. Justice Haynes, he's going to be a sophomore this year. Richard Young, also a sophomore this year. But I think Richard Young is also going to be really, really good for this team in a lot of different situations. 
over to the tied in room. We don't re- this is one of the rooms that we don't really know how it's going to shake out. CJ Dupree, you know, he was kind of tied in one last year, um, but didn't really do a ton. You know, I don't know if it was scheme stuff or what, but I thought he was going to be a whole lot better than, you know, the production ended up for him. Danny Lewis Jr. as well, he's a guy, he's really, really big. He, he's a really good blocker. He can block in on the line of scrimmage, and he can get out there, and he can make some catches, man. Danny Lewis is an athlete. He can get out there and make catches for Alabama in this offense. And uh, you know what? I, I really hope in this Kalen DeBoer system that the tight ends get used a little bit more. We thought, you know, last year uh, the tight ends were going to get used some, but really at the end of the day they didn't. So we'll see how that shakes out. The backups here, Ty Lockwood, Robbie Oots, he's been in the program as well. He's, you know, you, you ask him to do anything, he'll do it. He's a guy, you know, he's a leader on this team. Also, you got Jay Lindsey and then uh, Josh Cuevas as well. He was a transfer from um, Washington as well. Over to the offensive line room now as we're just a couple of way, minutes away from kickoff. Don't really know how it's going to shake out. This is kind of what we had on the depth chart for the offensive line, but we could see a bunch of different things, honestly on the offensive line. Elijah Pritchett, left tackle. That's probably where we're going to see him, I would assume. Um, trying to pull up here. Tony Sukalis put something out earlier where they were repping. I'm trying to find it here on Twitter. Jaden Roberts also is dressed for the game, which, I mean, maybe he's perfectly fine now, but I probably would have not. Um, this is how Tony Sukalis put it out. Left tackle Elijah Pritchett. Left guard, Jaden Roberts at left guard, not right guard. James Brockermeyer at center. Tyler Booker at right guard. And Wilkin Formby, or yeah, Wilkin Formby at right tackle. So kind of just flip the guards here. And that's kind of, you know, what they were seeing in pregame anyways for this Alabama offensive line. I do think I'm really excited to see maybe some Olasalainen. I think he's a really, really, you know, He hasn't played a lot of football. He's from Finland. He's not from the United States, but man, he's a really big dude, and I think he has progressed a lot. Parker Brailsford at the center position. He is out. He hasn't been practicing. You know, there's, Kalen DeBoer said it the other day that they weren't, you know, worried about him transferring or anything, so, you know, we'll see. We'll see, but according to him, you know, we're not worried about Parker Brailsford transferring. Joseph Iannata Probably going to get those center two snaps today. I'm also really excited for some young guys. Rock Montgomery, William Sanders, Miles McBay. I think a lot of those guys are going to be really good for Alabama as well. And I'm super excited to see what they have to offer. Over on the defense, the defensive line here, one of the most stacked rooms I think we have. LT Overton's gotten a lot of hype during spring. We've seen a ton on him you know, in those uh, videos that they've been putting out and everything like that. Um, just the depth on the, on the defensive line is absolutely insane for Alabama. And, uh, you know, I can't wait. Can't wait to really see, you know, how, how everything shakes out. Tim Keenan, obviously, he was great for Alabama last year. I think this also has to be a year that Jaheim Otis steps up. I think Jaheim Otis is a really, really, really good player for Alabama. But, you know, he kind of lost a little bit, of, a lot of weight, honestly, coming in. And, um, you know, he's a good run stopper. But at the end of the day, he hasn't, you know, been just over, you know, he, he hasn't given us, I think, what we expected from him, you know, coming out of high school. And then he was being so big. He started his freshman year, and now we're in his third year. And, Hopefully he can make that jump to possibly be being a first-round um, NFL draft pick next year. A couple more to come here, but I want you guys, if you are ready for some Alabama football, spam RTR in the comments section. We are about two minutes away, hopefully, from kickoff. ESPN has the UFL on right now. There's about 48 seconds left in that game, so hopefully we can... Uh, it, it'll cut straight to the game, I, I'm hoping. It's supposed to be on ESPN, so we'll see. 
Keep getting those RTRs in the chat right now. We have 508 people. Holy crap for A-Day. Keep those likes up as well. We've only got 49 likes, guys. Let's pump up those numbers. We try to get about 50%. That, that view to like ratio, that lets YouTube know that, you know, things are happening here on the Alabama Football Report and to push it out to more people. So get in the comment section right now. Spam your RTRs. I am so excited. Clarice spamming RTR. Logan, Kevin, Ty Man in there. Ty Man's in every single chat sports live stream. And I love it. He's probably one of the biggest chat sports supporters out there, I think. He's always in the stream for us, and we appreciate that. Jason Anderson putting in his RTR. Allen's RTR. I see Brian, Stu, Nancy, Cassandra, Kevin, Jay Pate, Josh Pate. The people are talking. Katrina, Carol, Jamie, Sean. Jay Pate saying, big link. Let's go. Let's go. Wearing my, if they ain't wearing crimson shirt, you guys know the rest. F them. F them. Dusty saying RTR. Sean saying RTR. Mike Evans in there spamming his RTR. Let's go, guys. Let's go, guys. We got eight seconds left in this UFL game. Hopefully it kicks right over to the Alabama A-Day game. Man, it's getting real. It is getting real. The first time in, what, 16, 17 years now that Alabama has an A-Day game without Nick Saban leading them in on the Walk of Champions. It's exciting. It's exciting. It's a new era in Alabama football. I will keep saying that. I will keep saying that. Tashawn in there saying it's going to be lit. I am so excited, man. I, I, I can't say it enough. <laughs> I cannot say it enough. And my God. 26 to 28 here in this UFL game. Four seconds left. DC is lining up for a game winning field goal with four seconds left. 44 yard attempt. And either they took a timeout or a delay of game. My God. Come on. Come on. We're trying to see some Alabama football, man. Trying to see some Alabama football. Keep spamming those RTRs. We're up to 90 likes now. We appreciate that. We appreciate that here on the Alabama Football Report. Bo in there saying, like old Willie says, blitz, bama, blitz, baby. I think we're going to see a lot of blitzing this year. I think we're going to see a lot of blitzing. You know, this Kane Womack defense is going to allow, they're calling another timeout, my God. Kane Womack's defense is going to allow these athletes, whether it's linebackers or that bandit position or the wolf position, to be athletes, they're not just going to be, you know, do, doing certain assignments. They're going to be pushing guys off in pass coverage. So we're going to be, I mean, it, to me it seems like we're going to be running a lot of nickel. It kind of seems what it's going to be. You know, we ran a lot of nickel last year, so it's not a massive change or anything. But, you know, I think it's going to allow these guys to, to be more of their skill set, be more athletic. Nancy spamming roll tide. John's asking who's quarterback to? Ty Simpson. Absolutely. Ty Simpson. It is absolutely Ty Simpson. And I think if anything happens, God forbid, to Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson is going to be that guy for Alabama. And I have full faith that he can do it. As DC nails the 49 yard field goal to win it. All right. Let's get out of that. Let's, let's go to this game now. Because I am way too, way too uh, excited for this. If you guys haven't already as well, make sure you are subscribed here to the Alabama Football Report. We've got videos, you know, four or five times a week on Alabama football Transfer portal's coming up, so even though A-Day is, you know, kind of going by the wayside after today, spring football will be wrapped up in two days. The transfer portal opens up, and we'll see what Alabama can do in the transfer portal. I think, uh, I think they're going to make some noise. 
I think they're going to make some noise in the transfer portal. Keep spamming your RTRs. Yeah, Adam, I feel the exact same way. Who cares about the DC defenders? Let's get to this game. They're probably going to come in. It's probably already going to be kicked off, which is annoying, but it's where we're at. It's where we're at. Now they're doing post game. Oh my goodness. Just flip it over, man. Let's see. I don't think I don't think it's on any other channel besides ESPN. Maybe they'll delay it a little bit. If you're wondering why I'm looking this way, because that's where the TV's at. Wayne saying roll tide roll from Atlanta. No, Jaden, unfortunately, we cannot show the game here. So I'm just going to kind of be doing some play-by-play -play for you guys. You know, kind of just giving some color commentary as best I can for you. Um, you know, copyright. Can't do it. We'd probably get sued, unfortunately. Wish we could. Wish we could. Joan at the game. Let's go. How many people you think are there, Joan? How many people do you think are at the game today, the A-Day game? Let me know. Is there an official roster? Yes, there is an official roster. Um, it's kind of, it's a lot. Because <laughs> it's offense versus defense. It's not, it's not, you know, crimson versus white. Here we go, finally. Showing some stuff. Man, the field doesn't look amazing. I'll tell you that. Kalen DeBoer's first A-Day game as Alabama's head coach. Let's go. Spam your RTRs in the comments section. It is about that time. Oh, man. I woke up this morning, and I was so excited. I put my shirt on immediately. They ain't wearing crimson. F them. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. We don't have, John, the uh, attendance quite yet. The lower bowl looks full. I'll say that. Right now, the lower bowl looks pretty full. It's a hot day in Tuscaloosa, though. It is a very, very hot day, just like it was last year. Don't see a lot of people in the upper bowl, but the, the lower bowl is absolutely full. You love to see it. You love to see it. I think we're about ready. And here we go. Roll tide. Roll. Back to catch it is uh, Kendrick Law. They're good. I don't know if they're just doing all fair catches today or how it's going to go, but you know, it's, he, they're going to call a fair catch here on this one. And see, the scoreboard says crimson and white. Well, I guess that makes sense. Offense is... Offense is white. Defense is going to be crimson today. See Tyler Booker in there, Elijah Pritchett, James Brockermeyer. Along the offensive line, Jam Miller is going to be a running back first here. Alongside Jalen Milrow. Oh, it's going to be both of them. Haynes and Miller are both in there. Here's the snap. Gives it to Jam Miller off the left side. And he's going to take it for a 15, 20, 25-yard gain. Finally pushed out by Malachi Moore. And wow, off that left side, baby. Off that left side. Jam Miller and Justice Haynes, man, when they're in that little wing T set, nobody's going to know who's going to get the ball, where they're going to go. As we are underway. Oh, man, they have no clock either. <laughs> okay going to be wild. Here's the snap. Back to passes. Jalen Milrow, he's going to scramble off to the left side. He's going to pick up a first down, maybe didn't get tackled. They're not going to be tackling the quarterbacks today. So it's either going to be a first down or he's going to be very, very close there to the first down. Looks like maybe they are going to give him a first down. Type your ones in the comments section right now. 
for Jalen Milrow, baby. So they have no they have no clock on the screen. We don't know how that's going to go. Okay. Here's the snap. Jalen Milrow hands it off to Jam Miller. That's going to be a first down. It was second and two before. Now it's going to be first down. So spam your ones now in the comments section. We're going to see how this broadcast goes, man, because it's not a normal game. It's not going to be a normal game. So, Jalen Milrow last year, 35 total touchdowns for Alabama. I think he's going to have a great season this year. Let me know in the comment section right now, guys. Do you guys think Jalen Milrow wins the Heisman this year for Alabama? As he takes the snap, fakes it to Justice Haynes. He's in the pocket. Throws it deep down the left side. It is caught! Jeremy Bernard all the way down to the five-yard line. Woo-hoo! Jalen Jay Boogie, baby. Jay Boogie in the first pass is going to go to Jeremy Bernard, the transfer from Washington, as he gets hit immediately by Malachi Moore. Going quick here, Justice Haynes gets the snap off the right side. He's going to be in touchdown, Alabama. Obviously. I <laughs> love to see it. First touchdown of the game for Justice Haynes in the offense. Immediately up 6-0 on the first drive of the game. Spam your 22s in the comment section for Justice Haynes getting that first touchdown for Alabama. Yeah, Josh. The offense looks really good. The offense looks really, really good. As we're on for the kick here, and it is good. That's number 97, Reed Schubach. Not even Connor Talty. So Reed Schubach gets the, the first kicking situation for Alabama in today's A-Day game. Well, good for the offense. Not so good for the defense. That was uh, pretty easy. Pretty easy for the offense, all things considered. There's seven nothing here. Like we said, it's going to be a little bit of a different format for this game. The uh, scoring is is going to be set completely different. And now we're right back. Ty Simpson in there at quarterback for Alabama. He hand, or fakes the handoff. Who's that? Zay Mincy or Red Morgan? Number 16 for Alabama. That's going to be Red Morgan. Got some pressure off the left side, and Ty Simpson just threw it away. Very smart there by Ty Simpson. A lot of new numbers on this team, a lot of new guys. Red Morgan, obviously a freshman, but has been getting a lot of buzz. He's been getting a lot of buzz in spring. Three receivers out wide, a tight end close on the right side. I believe that's Josh Cuevas. A handoff here. To Richard Young, who's going to get about four yards or so. Richard Young, another young guy on this team, a sophomore. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be really good, you know, when he gets his opportunities. Third and six here for, if you want to call it the second team offense, Joseph Ayanata in there as the center. Here's the snap, drops back to pass. Ty Simpson's going to throw it, and a nice pass in coverage to Cole Adams, who brings it in. Cole Adams also has been getting a lot of buzz in spring, probably not as much as some of the other guys, but uh, man, Cole Adams with a very, very nice catch. I didn't see who the defender there was. But first down here, type in your ones in the comment section. As Richard Young's still in there, he's getting the handoff right up the middle. Breaks a tackle. He's going to get six, seven. Breaks another tackle and another one for nine yards. Richard Young, baby, I'm telling you guys. I am telling you guys. Richard Young's going to be a dog. 
breaks one tackle, two tackles. Oh my God, he absolutely trucked somebody in there. I think that might have been Zabian Brown, also a true freshman on this team. Two receivers out wide. Ty Simpson in the shotgun. I think that's Richard Young again. And he's kind of going to get blown up. Actually, no, that's not Richard Young. That's Daniel Hill, but ends up still getting the first down. So type your ones in the comment section there. He got hit in the backfield, but was not able to get brought down. Casey Poe in there at right tackle as well. Nikhil Bertrand, Bertrand in there at right guard. Joseph Ayanata in there at center. Here's the snap, a fake. Ty Simpson's going to scramble around over to the left side a little bit. He's going to throw it deep down the left side. Oh, and it's almost intercepted by Bray Hubbard coming over. He's going to be out of bounds, but an excellent effort by Bray Hubbard getting all the way over. I assume he's playing that safety position today to get a nice PBU. He caught the ball, but he was out of bounds down that left side right in front of the pylon. I missed who that ball was intended to. Somebody in the 80s. Some of these numbers kind of look alike, though. Here's what it is. Second down and 10. A little RPO. Ty Simpson keeps it right up the middle. He's going to get about five before they blow it dead. So the offense continuing to just go right down the field on both ends, the ones and the twos. Ryan Williams is not here today. Ryan Williams, I don't believe, comes in until the summertime. I think uh, by his social media, I think he's down in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, having a, having a good old time. Ty Simpson in the shotgun here on third and six. He's going to go across the middle and just overthrows Emmanuel Henderson. So that's going to be a stop for the defense finally. But with this new scoring system, it does not give them any points. No three and out, no turnover. And the offense at the defensive 36-yard line, they're going to go for it out here on fourth and six. The defense for a chance to get their first big stop of the game. This could get the defense some points, and I think that's what the coaching staff is trying to do here. Drop back, Ty Simpson. He's going to throw, and it's going to be caught. First down. Who is that? 87. That's Danny Lewis. Like to see him getting, getting in there, catching some passes. He's totally able to. He's a big guy, man. He's a real big, strong guy. I'd love to see him in some, in some red zone opportunities this year. From the 26-yard line, a little RPO. Oh, a little sidearm pass out to Daniel Hill. Ty Simpson gets it to him. And he's going to pick up about eight. So Alabama now down in the game time red zone. Use code chat sports. That's C H A T S P O R T S. For $20 off your first purchase. Well, handoff here right up the middle to Daniel Hill again on second and two. Looks like he got stopped just short of that first down marker. <clears throat> so it's going to be probably about third and one here. For the Alabama second team offense. Let me know in the comment section, guys. Do you think Jalen Milrow wins the Heisman this year? As we get a handoff right up the middle and another first down for the second team offense. Rock Montgomery in there now. Looks like at right guard for Alabama. 
Kalen DeBoer took his Washington team all the way to the national championship last year and fell to Michigan. But man, a great season. He had that Washington team playing with so much grit. They played in so many close games last year. Robbie Oots in at tight end as well right now for the second team offense. As we get a little motion here and a handoff. And who's that number 13? Number 13. That's Cole Adams. Cole Adams on a little end around. He gets it. Looks like a little RPO action. He hands it off. And he's going to get about, I don't know, six or seven yards here for Alabama's offense, their second team offense. Kalen Abor showing off a little smile. Cole Adams, somebody we did not see at all last year. And he's gotten the ball on two plays today and has made the most of it. A little pitch action to the left side. And that's going to get in for a touchdown. The white team again. Richard Young gets his first spring game touchdown for Alabama today. The white team, the offense today, man. Just going down the field. They had a fourth a fourth down that they converted with Ty Simpson at the helm. And it's 13-0 offense. Who is this? Upton Bellenfonts on for the kick. The extra point is good. So the offense up now, 14 zip. Defense not looking good so far in the first half. We'll see, maybe, are we going to go to commercial here or nah? All right, we are going to go to commercial here, which gives us a little bit of time to tell you about today's sponsor on the Alabama Football Report. It's going to be game time. Spring is here, which means we have baseball to watch, along with playoff basketball, hockey, and you shouldn't have to miss any of the action because of ticket prices. Game time, with game time, you can get killer last-minute deals and all-in prices for your next big event. There's nothing more frustrating than spending time searching for the, for the best ticket prices, which is why you should give game time a shot. They have flash deals. They have zone deals. They have the lowest prices guaranteed. If you're trying to catch a game, a concert, or any other big event, I love going to comedy shows. Make sure you guys get download the Game Time app today and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Alabama baseball is going to be on today afterwards, after the A-Day game. You see it right there in that middle picture at 5 p.m. Central Time against Arkansas. They dropped the game yesterday. They're trying to get their get-back game today. I love that Game Time gives you Views from your seats before you purchase, just like you see that one in the middle right there, before you purchase your tickets, so there are no surprises when you show up. Plus, hidden fees suck. Nobody likes these hidden fees that some of these ticketing apps have. Game Time does not have that. They have all-in price options, so you really know how much the tickets are going to cost before you buy, or before you, you know, get to the end there. It's the best place to find last-minute seats. Download the Game Time app today. Create your account and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, create your account and use code CHATSPORTS. That's C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, CHATSPORTS, for $20 off your first purchase. That link will be in the comments section and the description of today's show. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. As Jalen Milrow is on again for the Alabama Crimson Tide here. We're talking to Nick Saban as well. He's going to hand it off to Justice Haynes on the left side. That offensive line is getting a real nice push. I like that. And two flags are going to come in. Your first flags of the spring game. We'll see what it is there.
face mask on the defense. So that'll give Alabama an automatic first down. Type your ones in the comments section. Spam your ones in the comments section. We have 157 people watching right now. I want to see 157 ones or me's. Josh Cuevas in motion on the left side. Will fake the handoff. Jalen Milrow back to pass down to the right side. Oh my God, Jeremy Menard. Jalen Milrow just absolutely put it, and he breaks another tackle all the way down to the three yard line. Jeremy Bernard. Two big catches on the day for him. Jalen Milrow put that one right over the defensive back. As we get the replay, Jeremy Bernard coming from the left side of the field all the way to the right side of the field. Makes that catch over Zabian Brown, breaks another tackle, and Damani Jackson brings him down at the two-yard line. So Alabama quickly, Jalen Milrow two for two with 87 yards so far on the day. Justice Haynes in there, going to get it right up the middle. And he's going to be stuffed. Man, they just cut away so fast. You don't get a chance to see who, who made the tackle. Keon Sab, it looks like, made the tackle on that one. The transfer DB from Michigan. Probably going to be playing a lot of safety for Alabama. It looks like they're going to bring Jam Miller in the game at running back. Going to be in that pistol formation. Jalen Milrow in the shotgun motion. Up the middle, Jam Miller walks in easily. Jesus. Well, I understand that the offense probably has the, the advantage in the A-Day game, but man, 20 to nothing so far is not necessarily what you'd like to see. You'd like to see the defense... You know, make a stop, make a play here or there. The defense, a lot of missed tackles so far, which I get it, it's spring, but you don't like to see it. Connor Talty finally coming on. There's not even going to be a rush as he drills it, the extra point. So 21 to zip. The offense here just absolutely going crazy for Alabama on their A-Day game today. Man, a lot of people, I'm seeing now a lot of people in the upper deck, at least on that shaded side of Bryant-Denny Stadium. The other side didn't look like there were, didn't look like there were a ton of people. I want you guys right now, predict Alabama's record in 2024. Let me know how many games, how many losses, wins do you think Alabama's going to have this year? Tough schedule, Tennessee on the road, Wisconsin on the road, Georgia at home. As the second team offense comes back in, Ty Simpson at quarterback. No, excuse me, uh, Dylan Lonergan at quarterback. He's going to take it and he's going to throw Who's that? To C.J. Dupree for about five yards. And they're going to speed it up a little bit. They're going to speed it up. This is also the first year that college football has allowed the helmet um, stuff. Handoff right here. I believe that's Daniel Hill right up the middle. He's going to get right there on a second and five run right up the middle. Very, very close to that first down marker. It looks like it's going to be third down for Alabama. Type your threes in the comments section. Offense or defense, doesn't matter. Dylan Lonergan in there at quarterback for Alabama. Both offensive lines have looked good so far as well for Alabama today. As Lonergan gets the snap, gives it off to Daniel Hill on the left side, and he's going to get the first down. Got William Sanders in there, Rock Montgomery in there on the offensive line. Joseph Iannata in at center. 
There's going to be a lot of switching going around today, so I'll try to keep you guys updated as best I can on kind of who's in there, who's at what position. Still out of the shotgun, not a single snap from under center yet, as they're going to fake it, and he's just going to throw it away, as I believe that was again Red Morgan, maybe, coming off the edge. Got some pressure on Dylan Lonergan there. A lot of good decisions so far by the quarterbacks as well. If there's pressure, just throw it away, man. Just throw it away. He was still inside the tackle box, but there was a receiver in the area. So no intentional grounding there. Keep commenting what you think Alabama's record's going to be next year. As Dylan Lonergan drops back to pass, gets it out there. to Richard Young for a gain of about eight, nine. It's going to be third and about one for this offense. There is a flag on the play, though. Our second of the day. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed right here to the Alabama Football Report. We're going to be bringing you videos just because it is... You know, the offseason officially is coming up. Does not mean we're going to stop anytime soon. The transfer portal up here in two days opens up. There's going to be a lot of movement in the transfer portal, and Alabama is going to lose some guys. They're going to gain some guys. We'll keep you guys updated on that. The snap, Dylan Lonergan surveys the field. Emmanuel Henderson ends up getting the snap. They didn't show what the penalty was, but it was on the offense. So... Emmanuel Henderson gets that gain of about five to make it about third and eight for that third team slash second team offense. The depth along the offensive line only makes it to be where it's going to be about, you know, first and second team offensive line. Cole Adams in there at wide receiver. Danny Lewis in there, flexed out. That's going to be a pass to Cole Adams for a gain, bringing up about fourth and two for Alabama. It looked like Justin Okoronkwo, the true freshman from Germany, the linebacker, makes the tackle on that one. It's springtime for the camera guys too, man. They are, they are wiling out here. They're going to go for it. Fourth and one here. Hand off right up the middle, and it's going to be stopped. Maybe? It looks like it's going to be stopped. James Smith in there on the stop for that defense. What is, now they're saying it's second down? What are, we, what are we talking about here? See, it said fourth down, now it's first down, now Kalen DeBoer saying it's second down. Maybe we're just running practice situations here. It's kind of what it's going to be like. So second and ten here. I guess. We'll pass out to, I think that's Robbie Oots, maybe. I think that's Robbie Oots for about five. Yep. Going to get taken down by Peyton Woodyard, another freshman defensive back for Alabama. Jihad Campbell in there with this defensive group as well at linebackers. Alabama goes fast. Right up the middle, handoff. It's going to get a first down and just still driving, man. Still driving. That R.J. Gardner, another guy. Is he a walk-on? He's not a scholarship guy, but he's big. Jesus. Unless we got some wrong jersey numbers, but according to the... Uh, to the roster that media members got today, number 41 is R.J. Garner. Yeah, Josh, Cole Adams so far, he's gotten a few big plays. He's gotten a few big plays uh, for this receiving core. Man, that's, that's really nice to see. Because he's kind of one of those guys that, you know, we didn't necessarily think 
you know, is he going to do anything? Is he going to fit in? I guess he is. I guess he is. And more power to him. He's making some plays so far. L.A. is saying Bama's going 12-0. and Cannot wait. I really hope they do. I really hope they do. Yeah, very, very fast. Cole Adams. <clears throat> Defense so far not looking very good, but it is the spring, so, you know. We'll have our winners and losers video for you guys, and you can torch me in the comment section all you want about, you know, there are no losers, it's the spring game, but in life there are losers. So after A-Day is over today, we will do a winners and losers video for you guys, so make sure you stick around, turn those post notifications off, go down there, hit the notification button, put it to all so you get all of the push notifications, whether it's live videos, whether it's shorts, whether it's just you know, videos on demand for you guys. Make sure you get those post notifications on for the Alabama football report. Otherwise, you'll only get some of them, and sometimes it's like you get notifications when the live shows are over. Or, you know, I got a notification the other day from a video we posted like two days prior. So it's, it's weird. Make sure you put those post notifications on all so you get all of um, the notifications when things happen. Here's another question for you guys. Does Ty Simpson ever transfer? There's been a lot of talk about, you know, Ty Simpson, more, more from a national media perspective. Ty Simpson's a guy who could start for this team. So, you know, if he looks good in A-Day, you know, he looks good last A-Day, he looks good in the opportunities that he got in 2023 for Alabama, you know, kind of saved the day against that USF game when Ty Buckner came in and we're playing a lacrosse player at quarterback. I think Ty Simpson, though, is kind of, he's in that opportunity where, you know, he's, so far, he's stuck to his word. He, he said when he was being recruited for Alabama that he's okay with being that Mac Jones, you know, not starting until three, four years in. Third and three here, a little motion to Emmanuel Henderson. End around, he's going to get the first down. And that's going to be something to look at, obviously, in this Kalen DeBoer offense. A lot of those, um, you know, um, jet sweeps, that I really, really like to see. It's going to be, you know, coupled with some RPOs. I think that was a straight jet sweep as Dylan Lonergan's still here at quarterback. Alabama first and goal here. Hands it off to Daniel Hill, and he gets stuffed. That's going to be a loss of about three or four. Jeremiah Beeman gets the stop on that one. For this Alabama offensive line, big number 92, I, this, uh, this defensive line, excuse me, is going to be really good this year, I think. You know, they haven't looked so good so far today, but it seems like they're kind of starting to get the feel of things. This looks kind of like it's going to be the second team defensive line. As Dylan Lonergan's back to pass, tries to throw a jump ball up back shoulder to uh, Danny Lewis, and it falls incomplete, making it third and goal here. Type in your threes right now in the comments section. It's third down, whether you want the offense to score or the defense to get a stop, a stop here. Type your threes in in the comments section. Yeah, Yonze Pierre, or, yeah, Yonze Pierre also in there on that defensive line. Another great athlete for Alabama. From the nine-yard line, Dylan Lonergan drops back to pass. Oh, and it's tipped around and dropped. Not really dropped. Peyton Woodyard in there on the, the pass breakup as Alabama's going to bring in the field goal unit here. So a stop for Alabama's defense. It's not going to get them any points. It's not a three and out. But they're going to force them to at least a field goal attempt. It's going to be Reed Schubach in there for the field goal and he sneaks it in the uprights for Alabama's offense. So, so far, the field goal's all been short, but they've all been good. 
Offense up now, 24-zip. Let me know in the comments section right now, guys. Do you guys think Ty Simpson ever transfers? I'm not saying in two days or in a week or so. I'm saying ever, ever. Does Ty Simpson ever transfer? I don't know, Josh. I don't know what the – they haven't said what the attendance is, man. I'm sorry. When I find out, I will let you guys know. I will let you guys know when I find out what the attendance is today. I mean, it's probably technically not even the second quarter. I haven't seen anybody put it out yet with the attendances. I'm sure they'll put it up on the screen. <clears throat> what do you guys think? Why for yes and for no? Does Ty Simpson ever transfer from Alabama? Adam says yes. John Smith says no. I would, I would love it if he stuck around because what I think is probably going to end up happening is Jalen Milrow is going to have a monster year this year. That's my hope. And he ends up being a first-round pick in the 2025 NFL draft. If that happens, Ty Simpson will be your QB1 next year as long as he sticks around. As long as he sticks around. L.A. saying yes. I don't know how to pronounce your whole name, so I'm going to call you L.A. Thinking Ty Simpson's going to transfer. I don't think he does. I don't think he does. I was trying to say this earlier, but they got right back to everything. Ty Simpson, when he was being recruited to Alabama, he told you know the media that he wasn't afraid of waiting his turn and being that QB2, QB3 for a couple of years, four years, before he gets the opportunity. He specifically mentioned Mac Jones as a guy that he looked up to because that was the same for Mac Jones. Mac Jones only played for one year and ended up being a first-round NFL draft pick. You know, obviously things haven't been the best for him in the NFL, but it is what it is. I think Ty Simpson sticks around for this Alabama team. John thinks he's going to be the starter in the fall. I, I wouldn't go that far, but... Again, this is the first year college football has allowed kind of that headset, you know, communication system, so no sign stealing anymore. So we're kind of getting our first look at that. As it looks like Ty Simpson, maybe that's Austin Mack. Kind of hard to tell from the side. Nope, Ty Simpson in there again. And he steps up. He's going to drop back to pass, and it's going to be caught. And lit up is Kobe Prentice by Keon Sab. But it's going to be a first down. Love to see the guys lay in the wood on A-Day, baby. Kobe Prentice got hit hard, but was able to hold on to the ball there. Another guy in this Alabama receiving core who hopes to break out in 2024. Ty Simpson been putting the ball on the money besides one throw. Hand off right up the middle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. To the 20, to the 10. Jam Miller all the way down inside the one-yard line. He just broke it right up the middle, and he's going to be tackled at the two. Jam Miller right up the middle. Deontay Lawson went to the wrong hole. A nice block there. I think that was uh, Kendrick Law downfield. These wide receivers blocking, man. Whew. The offense is just taking off. Jam Miller, four rushes for 75 yards so far in what I still assume is the first quarter. They've got the one up there, but there's no clock. So that's why we don't have a clock. Up the middle, Jam Miller. No, Ty Simpson keeps it, fakes out the cameraman. Ty Simpson spun Zabry and Brown. I guess they're going to call it a tackle. It'll probably be a loss. Nice little athletic shifty move there by Ty Simpson, though. Kendrick Law came in motion from left to right. An RPO up the middle from Jam Miller. Ty Simpson kept it. And I would assume they're going to maybe credit Zabin Brown there with a tackle. So second and goal here now. 
from the four-yard line, they're going to give them a loss of about one or two. Here's the snap, handoff right up the middle. Jam Miller bounces it to the outside, and he's going to get in for his second touchdown for him today. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this, man. The offense is just, it's just, I mean, wild. This defense has not been able to stop him at all. That's, I know it's spring, man, but Jesus, it's a little worrisome that the defense isn't stopping him at all. So 30 nothing now for the offense. As the field goal unit comes out, and it's going to be good. Is that James? No, 96. I thought they had 86 James Burnup out there. So all three kickers now getting some run. As the offense is now up 31 to nothing for Alabama on A day. The first A day under Kalen DeBoer. The defense does not look good at all. At all. Hopefully, against, you know, regular, <laughs> regular competition, it'll be a whole lot better. But right now, they're getting gashed up the middle. The DBs are, you know, getting beat. And Alabama's wide receiving core is good. You know, they've got a lot of talent, but still, man, that's why I was saying earlier, this DB room needs to be a spot where Alabama picks up some, um, some players in the transfer portal. So let me know again, guys. We asked this question earlier. But what position does Alabama need to add to the most in the transfer portal? <clears throat> Offensive line was one that, you know, you look at and you think, yeah, we need some depth along the offensive line. But they've held their own so far against this, you know, really good. Alabama's got a good defensive line. They're not playing good right now, <laughs> obviously. 31 zip, but they've got a lot of depth on the on the defensive line. They've got a lot of guys who have played a lot of football, a lot of meaningful football. So, you know, they're gonna have to step it up. You know, I wish I wish we had a clock. I wish it was normal. Josh, I would never burn my Alabama gear. I don't care who the starter is. Jalen Hale is on the sidelines for Alabama, just kicked back. He's got his little chair. He's got his knee up. Just watching the game, man. He was a guy that I was super excited for this year as well. Hopefully he can get back for the start of the 2022 season. As Austin Mack gets his first run in here, he's going to fake the handoff, swing to the right, and he's going to underthrow the ball. To, it looks like another walk-on is going to be, get his name called. Jay Loper, I think that's who that was. Austin Mack, highly touted. This is also his first spring, too. He's only 17 years old. He should be going to prom. As he drops back to pass again, and he's going to sling it out. To the tight end on the right side and low again. Throws it at his knees. And Ty Lockwood out there could not make the catch. It's just one of those situations. He's got a lot of nerves. There's a lot of people in the crowd. The biggest, get, I mean, biggest practice he's ever had in his life. But he's going to be good. He's going to be good eventually. Once he gets there. Drops back here. A lot of pressure. And it looks like they're going to give him a sack. It looks like they're going to give the defense a sack on that one. That's Jay Sean Ross. The true freshman. 
who is committed to Washington, ends up coming to Alabama with Kalen DeBoer. Isaiah Fagai in there. Curtis Perry in there on that defensive line as well. Colby Peavy in there, kind of in that little slot roll, right up the middle handoff. It's going to get just a couple. That's Darian Claiborne. Again, guys, there's going to be a lot of guys that are called that we have not talked about at all. And that's just, you know, some of these guys got to get some reps, you know. Some of these guys just got to get some reps. Adam, it's hot in Tuscaloosa right now, man. Jalen Hale, Jalen Hale looking deathly ill does not surprise me. It's hot, man. And here's the snap looking left is Austin Mack. It looks like he's going to take off and get about one or so. So third down coming up here. Oh, and they gave the defense some points. I really don't know what for. But they gave the defense three points. And three points is supposed to be for a three and out. And I guess maybe they did that earlier, and that's when Kalen Abor just kind of set the uh, reset everything. So we'll give the defense three points since it's, since it's on the broadcast as them having three. And the offense is going to get flagged for holding here. So they're going to bring it back 10 yards. On their own 17-yard line, here's the snap. Drop backs to pass. Pressure up the middle, and he's going to be sacked. That's Nolan Ashbury, number 51 for this defense, coming in right up the middle and getting the sack for Alabama. The defense starting to wake up against the threes. <laughs> or the fours, if that's what you want to call it. Because Dylan Lonergan came in as the third quarterback of the day. It's going to be third and 26 now for Austin Mack leading this Alabama offense. I would assume handoff up the middle. That's my guess. Here. Snap, nope, drop back to pass. He's going to swing it out to is that number 27, Michael Lorino the third. I don't think, there's so many guys that are playing right now that I've just literally never heard of. They don't make our depth charts. But when you got, what, 120 people on the team, that's what happens. And the defense gets another three points for a three and out. So the defense working their way back. It's comeback time, baby. It's comeback time. As we go to commercial here. Who do you guys so far think is the MVP of A Day so far today? A singular player, not just offense or defense. Give me a singular player. I think so far. It's either got to be one of the running backs, Jam Miller maybe, or Jeremy Bernard possibly. He's had a couple of big plays. Cole Adams has had a couple of big plays so far. I like the way they've used him. Ty Simpson, Jalen Milrow have also been very good. We don't have stats, unfortunately. Let me see. They didn't have anything... ESPN earlier in regards to stats. Even though the game's on ESPN. Whatever. It's okay. It's okay. So we don't know what kind of stats we got going on, but a couple of guys have shown out. So let me know in the comment section right now. So far... We are uh, about 
You know, an hour so far into this spring game, ish or so, who do you guys think has looked the best on this Alabama team? Let me know in the comment section. Samuel, as, as awesome as that would be, Nick Saban coming back to coach the defense, that'll never happen. <laughs> Saban's done, man. Saban's done. Who that for life saying this RB core? Yeah, the running backs have been really good. Son Son saying Jalen Milrow. I like it. I like it. If you guys haven't been here for a watch party before, we do have a super chat menu for you guys. Any super chat, you know, you get a shout out. We show it on the screen up here. I'll do a beer cheers for you. We like drinking during games here at Chat Sports. So any super chat, I'll do a beer cheers. I got a little yellow hammer mixture here for you guys. I, I went to Reddit. I looked up what the actual yellow hammer recipe is, and I made a little mixture of myself, just like Galettes will do it. Um, so $10 super chat, I'll do a yellow hammer shot. $20 super chat, I will do a beer bong for you guys. I got that right down here. We'll do a beer bong for any $20 super chat today. And for $50, I'll do a beer bong and I will sing the fight song. Because I am an Alabama graduate. I know it. I know it by heart. Probably since maybe I was like 13, 14 is when I locked down those lyrics. There's no, uh, no coming back. They're ingrained into my memory. A couple free things you guys can do for us today just to help support the channel. Subscribe to the Alabama Football Report if you haven't done so already. We've got you know videos. We're going to be doing live uh, watch parties for you guys next year for every single game. We're hiring another guy here in the office, so we'll have another producer. He's also an Alabama fan. Like the show for us, share this video, and comment as much as possible. Get in the comment section, you know... Get the chat popping. We'd love to hear for, from you guys here during our watch parties. And let me know right now who you think so far is Alabama's MVP. Lucas is saying Ty Simpson. That's a really good one. Adam, you're wild for that one, buddy. You're wild for that one. And the kickoff, and there's nobody back. Well, I guess there's one guy back there to receive it. Who has that? <clears throat> Jalen Mbakwe was back to receive that kickoff simulation. Nobody else was down there. Looks like Kalen DeBoer is going to shake some stuff up. He kind of said he wanted to do more, less than like a you know, timed spring game, you know, like a regular game. He wanted to kind of mix in some practice style kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. It's not your exact, you know, game situation. We've got a two on the screen now. So it looks like we're in the second quarter. As Jalen Milrow back in, hands the ball off to Jam Miller on the right side, who looks like he's going to get about... One. Looks like we're back to full ones on ones here. <clears throat> Wilkin Formby in there at right tackle. James Brockermeyer in there at center. Malachi Moore back on the field on defense. It's 31 to 6 offense as we got second and nine here. Kendrick Law in motion from left to right. Back to passage, Jalen Milrow. He's going to throw deep down the right side and overthrows Kendrick Law just a little bit. Keon Sab was in coverage there, was all over Law. But why not? Try it. Jalen Milrow now two for three on the day, 87 yards. As that's going to bring up a third and nine for this Alabama Number one offense.
Here's the snap. Jalen Milrow in the shotgun. Oh, my God. Who's that? Daniel Hill right up the middle on pass pro is in, in, amazing. Lit whoever the linebacker was coming up. Two flags came in, though, right there, right in the middle of the offense. So it looks like it might be a hold, probably, along the offensive line. Jalen Milrow ended up just throwing the ball away. JT saying Womack's going to get an ass chewing from Nick Saban after this one. Shit, he might. <laughs> he might. <clears throat> Kane Womack coming. He was the head coach from uh, South Alabama. Now Alabama's D.C. It looks like who's that? Dylan Lonergan. He's in the game for Alabama, rolls out to the right. He puts it on the money to Emmanuel Henderson on first and 10 to get about eight yards. So Alabama, their defense got another three and out, so we're going to add another three to them. So 31 to nine now, 31 to nine. Still, they're still going to be doing the beans and steak dinner for the winners and losers. So right now, it looks like the offense is going to be having steak, but... We still have a whole second half. Here's the snap. Handoff up the middle is going to be stuffed. Number 47 on that one, Colby Peavy. No. What? There's no way. Said 47 on a jersey. Excuse me. There's two 47s on defense. James Smith also 47. He came in with Quay Russo. As Dylan Lonergan gets the snap here, there's going to be pressure again from James Smith. He tries to get it to Cole Adams a little bit behind him. Wasn't able to get it, kind of spun around, dropped it. So it's going to be fourth and four here. Is the defense going to get another three and out? I wonder if they're going to be doing any punting situations. They haven't done any of that yet. James Burnett's still the punter on this team. As we look at the schedule here, there's a couple games, man. Oh, at Oklahoma, Iron Bowl, it's going to be in Bryant-Denny Stadium this year. At LSU, at Tennessee, at Wisconsin. Van, or, excuse me, Georgia at home. We play South Carolina at home. Missouri had a very good season last year. We'll play them at home as well in 2024. A couple of those games, you know, uh, the Georgia game, the Wisconsin game, that's going to be on the road. That one could be a uh, very different kind of environment for Alabama. It could be very cold. <laughs> we'll see how it looks. First and 10 now. The defense does get another three points. So we'll try to stay on top of that. They've got 12 now. Jalen Milrow back in the game. And the handoff up the middle gets about one. Second and nine here, Alabama on their own 41-yard line. Jalen Milrow dropped back pass, and that one's going to be incomplete to Richard Young, who tries to get it on a little swing out to the right side, got lit up and dropped it. So third and nine now on the Alabama 31-yard line. Jalen Milrow in at quarterback right now for Alabama. You guys are cracking me up. No, unfortunately, Andre, I have not seen any stats for it, like anywhere. Jalen Milrow throws out to the left side. Oh, and another drop. Jeez, come on, guys. That one from Jaron Hamilton. Zabin Brown on the coverage for that one. And Kane Womack is starting to get fired up as the defense 
is starting to make a little bit of a comeback here. 31-15 now. The defense is starting to starting to um, get fired up. I like it. I like it. If you like it, go ahead and like the stream right now. Like the show for us. Wow, 130 likes, 161 people watching. That's way above our like ratio that we really like to have here. I appreciate that, guys. Keep liking the video if you haven't already. Uh, JT asking for my prediction against Wisconsin. I think we beat Wisconsin, even though it's on the road, um, a place we haven't gone in a while. I, I don't know exactly when the last time we've gone to Wisconsin. You know, we played them, was that Nebraska? I don't know. But it's, uh, it's going to be one of those things, man. In September, is it going to be hot still? Is it going to start cooling off there? I think we have a home-and-home home schedule with them as well. So if I'm not mistaken, they will come to Alabama in 2024. Excuse me, five. But I think we win. I definitely think we win. Adam saying 31-17 to 17 against Wisconsin. That's his prediction. Yeah, John, we did, we did change quarterbacks mid-drive. Just kind of one of these weird switching in and out. What happens if, you know, Jalen Milrow gets hurt, you know, during a drive, during a game? Somebody's got to go in there. I think they ended up uh, on that drive. They put in Dylan Lonergan um, just to, you know, see what he can do. And I like it. Getting some reps in with the ones is something that he hasn't got a chance to do a whole, a whole lot of. And in a real game, that's what's uh, going to be the case. He's not going to go in there and face twos. Adam saying his official score prediction against Georgia next year is a 41-34 loss. <clears throat> I would, I, you know, I don't know. We'll see how this defense kind of shapes up when they're, you know, facing real competition. But looks like Austin Mack back in there at quarterback. A low snap from Ayanada is going to be handed off to Kendrick Law, who's going to swing it out to the right side for a gain of about four. That second team offensive line in there again. Joseph Iannata looked like uh, Seth McLaughlin on that one. Just kind of rolled the ball back there. Parker Brailsford again has not participated in practice for the past couple of weeks. Not here today. He's probably on the sidelines, but not here today playing in the game. Here's the snap, another jet sweep to Kendrick Law. He's going to take it 15, 20, 30, 40. He stays in bounds all the way to about the 11-yard line. And man, this is something that I wish we did so much more of last year. Jet sweeps to Kendrick Law, man. The kid's an athlete. Let him be an athlete. Type your, type your 19s in the comment section, man. For Kendrick Law. Austin Mack back. He's going to get pressured. Steps up. He's going to take off. And they're going to mark him down for a gain of about five here. Showing that athletic ability. Long and lanky. Super, super skinny though, man. He'll pack on the pounds this offseason. Next year, he'll grow into his body. Let's see what they got him listed at. I'll find it in a second. Second and six here inside the red zone. He swings it out to the left side, and it's going to be caught in a gain of about four-ish or so. I believe that was Ty Lockwood again out to the left side getting uh, his first reception of the day. Third and two now. Let's 
Another motion, handoff up the middle to Richard Young, who's only going to get about one, and it's going to bring up fourth down. So this Alabama defense trying to get another stop. Keon Keeley in there on defense. So it's not just the second team defense going up here against uh, Austin Mack at quarterback. And the defense now on fourth down inside the red zone has a chance to pick up four points if the offense decides to go for it. In this new spring game format. And it looks like they are going to go for it on fourth and one from the 10 yard line. Oh, and it's maybe going to get an offsides, a snap. Oh my God, what is going on? And it may, an interception now. Who's that? Drake or Patrick Jr. gets an interception on a play that was busted from the start. Looked like Keon Keeley tried, uh, like jumped offsides. Joseph Iannotta snapped the ball. Austin Mack turned around, tried to call a timeout. He rolled the ball back to him. He picks it up, tries to throw it to the tight end, and Drake or Patrick Jr. getting dapped up by Tyrion Arnold. This is just so weird. The whole play, he tried to get the ball in the end zone to uh, Ty Lockwood. There's a flag on the play. So maybe it looks like they're going to call offsides on the defense now. What just a wild situation overall. And Drake Kirkpatrick Sr. there on the sideline as well, cheering on his son. Things you love to see in Tuscaloosa. Two tight ends set on the left side here. Got one running back in the, in the backfield to the left side of Austin Mack. As motion... Right to left, it's going to be handed off and out around the 20, or excuse me, the one yard line. And that's Bubba Hampton who got that one. Came on a little motion from right to left. I think I said left to right. That's my bad. With RJ Gardner in there at running back as well. Another walk on, I believe. Maybe a preferred walk in. He's going to get the ball up the middle and he's going to be absolutely stuffed in the backfield by James Smith. James Smith making a name for himself here on A-Day. Probably the best defensive player so far. If you're looking at players on defense, James Smith, I think, is playing the best along that defensive line. Oh, we got two guys in motion at the same time. That's going to be a penalty. Austin Mack, very smartly though, did not snap the ball. It looks like they're going to call timeout and figure it out. So the offense calls their first timeout. It's only a penalty if they snap the ball when there's two guys in motion at the same time. So those two guys were in motion. They didn't snap the ball. Austin Mack said, hey, this isn't supposed to happen. He stopped the play. Yeah, I mean, guys, look, Austin Mack is 17 years old. <laughs> He's not even a legal adult. <laughs> He's, by the time he ends up being, if he sticks around being Alabama's quarterback, he, um, I think he's going to be really, really good. I really hope Samuel's trolling saying Seth McLaughlin back in T-Town. Ohio State had their A-Day game today, or whatever they call it, Buckeye game, whatever the hell. Their spring game. And uh, without just talking a bunch of trap about Seth McLaughlin, you know, he's there now. <laughs> he's there now. I don't know about that, G Bama boy. I don't know about Austin Mack immediately being the backup. It's going to be Ty Simpson. Ty Simpson's going to be the backup for Alabama. Give you guys a little bit of the update. We have no clock. So they're saying it's the second quarter, so we'll, we'll assume that it's still the second quarter. Maybe it's the second half. I, we, we don't know. have no idea. 
We've been going for about an hour-ish or so here, so maybe it's the second half. I would assume spring game is going to be uh, about two hours or so. We're just going to treat it like a practice. I want to know right now in the comment section, though, from you guys, who do you have more confidence in from what you've seen so far? O for the offense, D for the defense. I think I know how this one's going to go, but let me know in the comment section what you guys think. The offense looks nice. There's still going to be some things you know, that they're going to have to work on just like we just saw as they just spring right back into the game. Austin Mack in at quarterback, a little toss out to the left side. Daniel Hill stuffed again at the line of scrimmage. Who was that? 35, I think that is. That's Jeremiah Alexander, I believe, on the stop. He was the first one, first one there. And another guy out of Alabaster, Alabama who was a five-star recruit, comes in, doesn't really get a whole lot of playing time. It's going to be a year that, you know, I, I think we see a lot of uh, Jeremiah Alexander. I think we see a lot of Keon Keeley, who didn't get really any reps last year. None in meaningful snaps anyways. As the defense is going to hold them to a field goal attempt from the left side, and that one's going to be good for the offense. As my shoe has come untied, and I keep stepping on the lace. So 34-15 now for the offense in this new spring format. Yeah, defense is starting to kind of get pissed, which is something you like to see. You know, kind of some of that give and take. You don't want the offense to, to look up, like just – Blow out the defense. You don't want the defense to get a three and out or, you know, four down stops every single time. You want some give and take. It's going to be interesting, too. You know, Kalen DeBoer is an offensive guy. Nick Saban was a defensive guy. So Alabama's defense, as we see Bryce Young here and Drake or Patrick Sr., I believe that is, on the sidelines. Um, you know, you always had faith in the defense under Nick Saban. It's kind of going to be swapped now. Motion here, Ty Simpson in for Alabama at quarterback. He's going to swing it out to uh, Kobe Prentice, who's going to get about two yards. The defense starting to come alive now. Devontae Smith first there. Who that for life said he's trusting the defense more. Okay, okay. Adam, I honestly thought the offensive line looked, has looked pretty good so far today. My personal opinion. Jim Miller back in there. Going to get the handoff on the right side. The defensive line. Who is that? Keanu Coat just blew up the right side of the offensive line. And the defense gets a second down stop. Jim Miller gets nothing on that one to bring up third and eight. Type in your threes in the comments. Damon Payne also there. Deontay Lawson in on the play. We're in that number zero. So third and eight here on Alabama's own 42-yard line, the offensive 42-yard line. Here's the snap. Ty Simpson dropped back the pass. Nobody open. He's going to scramble over to the left side and get rid of it, and it's going to be caught by Caleb Odom. For a gain of about six, seven, maybe five. Yeah, a gain of about five now, so it's going to bring up fourth and three, and possibly our first punt situation, maybe? We'll see. Caleb Odom caught that one. Very highly touted freshman. Coming in for Alabama. Came in as a tight end. Switched immediately to um, wide receiver. And it looks like they're going to give Alabama's defense another three points for that one. So 
So the defense coming back now. 34-18. As Jalen Milrow comes back in to be Alabama's quarterback. It's saying fourth and three. So I don't we'll see how the score goes. Drops back to pass here. Oh, and it's gonna be dropped by uh Richard Young. Red Morgan in there. Red Morgan's looked really good too. He's been all over the field. Jalen Milrow started this game out two for two, 87 yards. He's been 0 for 4 since. So trip stacks right in on the line. Jalen Milrow is going to hand the ball off. To Richard Young, who gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage again. So this defense really coming alive now, especially at the line of scrimmage. They cut away from who made the play. I think that was Jalil Hurley, maybe. I think that's. A, I think that was number twenty-five. Love to see a DB coming downfield making plays. Three wide receivers out, ride for Alabama. Richard Young on the left side of Jalen Milrow, just a little bit offset to him. Here's the snap. Richard Young goes out to the left side. Jalen Milrow, he's going to scramble to the right, being chased by Deontay Lawson and uh, Quandarius Robinson. Finally, kind of getting some action in this game, and they're going to Rule that probably as a sack. So Alabama's defense getting another stop. What are they showing this from 2021? So Alabama's defense now, they're going to get that four down stop point. The four points there, or excuse me, three points, to make it 34-21 now as Jalen Milrow comes off the field for Alabama's offense. Austin Mack back in there. He's going to give it off. Oh, and a face mask, a bad face mask. R.J. Gardner, Gardner, in there at running back. There's somebody else in there. I think it was William Sanders as well in there at center for Alabama. So William Sanders getting some center run. A good snap there on the first play. But a face mask is going to give Alabama's offense an automatic first down. As we got a $2 super chat here. From who dat? I read it right after this play as Austin Mack rolls out to the right side, gets it off to the tight end for a gain of about four. Two dollar super chat here from who dat for life. Detail. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll let you guys read that one, but it's good. Our first Super Chat of the day here. I'll give you a beer. Cheers for that one. Oh, man. You guys are funny. And a low snap again. Austin Max swings it out to the right side. To R.J. Gardner again for the first down on second and six. Really appreciate that super chat, guys. You do not have to super chat, obviously, but it goes a long way and it helps us out here. Keep the lights on. Everybody loves a good raise. The more we do here on the Alabama Football Report, you guys help us out a lot. Name a freshman who you think is going to start for Alabama now. I think so far what we've seen, Red Morgan seems to be a guy who is filled in really, really nice in that defensive back room. 
So Austin Mack fakes the snap, and that's going to be a sack. That's going to be a sack. There was nobody out there. We got a lot of walk-ons in now, getting some run. Yeah, Josh, or John, excuse me. Uh, the, uh, bad snaps. Bad snaps. William Sanders in there at center right now. Joseph had, Ayanata had a couple really bad snaps earlier. Not really, really. I mean, they're pretty bad. <laughs> they're Seth McLaughlin style snaps. I'll keep calling them that. Here's the snap. And man, Alabama's defense is just all over him now. That one, Curtis Perry getting in there on the action. Going up against that second team offensive line. I think they're they're really trying to, you know, kind of switch some guys in and out around, just do some spring stuff, which is understandable. You want to see what you got. You want to know who can play where on this offensive line. Alabama now down to the defensive 35-yard line. Up the middle, handoff. One of these other walk-ons here. That's Michael Lorino the third. Gets a couple of yards. I love seeing the walk-ons get some get some play. I think a lot more than what we've seen in the past under Nick Saban as well. 21 to 34 here, though. The offense had a very, very good first half. I assume we're in the second half now. No clock, but. I assume we're in the second half here. The offense are really, really good in the first half. The defense is woken up now. It's played really good as we're fourth down here now. Connor Talty is going to get a longer field goal, not too long. And that one's going to go wide right. So the defense holds to a missed field goal, add two more points for the defense. You know, I wasn't sure how this scoring was going to go, but I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Because you got to think about it, too. Yeah, right here in the first half, the offense scored 31 points, three in the second half. Three in the second half. And the defense, I believe, has scored all their points here in the second half. So Connor Talty misses that field goal. So a field goal, or excuse me, a... Uh, Kicker battle, I guess it is. As we see Alabama's SID there, Josh, talking to Kalen Abor, probably giving him a little time update. Possibly, I don't know. Usually a lot of the times on A Day, we see a lot of, uh, you know, guys... Uh, You know, you don't really know the time or whatever, and then kind of just manipulate it to way, the way they want to. All right, guys, a little bit about our sponsor today, Game Time. We appreciate them sponsoring us here at the Alabama Football Report. Spring is here, which means there's baseball to watch, along with playoff basketball, hockey, and you shouldn't have to miss any of the action because of ticket prices. With Game Time, you get the killer last-minute deals, and all-in prices for your next big event. There's nothing more frustrating than spending time searching for the best ticket prices, which is why you should give Game Time a shot. They have flash deals. They have zone deals. They have concerts. They have comedy shows, which is one of my best things to go and do on Game Time. So if you're trying to catch a game or any other event in your local area, Download the Game Time app today and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. I love that Game Time gives you views from your seat that you see right here. That's Alabama basketball, go, or excuse me, baseball, going up against Arkansas after a day at, in about 30 minutes or so, will be first pitch. So, you know, if you want to, last minute, grab your Alabama baseball tickets and head on over there to the Joe. Uh, Game Time also has, or excuse me, Game Time does not have hidden fees like some of these other ticketing apps that are out there. Um, Game Time gives you all in price options, 
so you really know how much the tickets are going to cost. It is the best place to find last minute ticket or last minute seats. Download the Game Time app today and create your account and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, create your account and redeem code CHATSPORTS. That's C H A T S P O R T S, CHATSPORTS, for $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. As we get back to the action here, keep letting me know in the comments section who is a guy that you think, who is a freshman that you think will end up starting for Alabama this year. Yeah, we don't really know how bad Jalen Hale's injury is. Hopefully it's not that bad. Hopefully he'll be back by 2024. Jalen Milrow back in second, or excuse me, first and 15. Back to pass. He's going to, oh my God, Emmanuel Henderson drops it. Hit him right here. Right in the bad spot. Right in the hand. So second and 15 now. The defense has been playing better. And Jalen Milrow has not gotten a reception since the second pass he threw of the day. Wild. Absolutely wild. I still have all the faith in the world and Jalen Milrow. He's had some bad luck. Really, one ball was overthrown. He's going to have a handoff here to the right side. Jam Miller. That's Keanu Coat. Man, Keanu Coat. Damon Payne as well, but Coat is so fast at that whatever they're at that wolf position linebacker linebacker position I think he's going to be kind of playing both for Alabama Keanu Code has looked really really good though I think he's going to going to be a guy that's going to play a lot Here's the snap, drop back to pass. Jalen Milrow gets the ball off to, looks like Josh Cuevas, who's going to get pushed all the way back to the line of scrimmage, but it's going to be a gain of about eight or nine on third and 14. Josh Cuevas, that transfer tied in from Washington, I think he's going to get a whole lot more opportunity than people think. As we're going to do, it's just a complete different swap. And Jalen Milrow's pissed, as he should be. Hasn't had the best spring game. The defense getting another three points here. And the comeback is on. The comeback is on for this Alabama defense. As we got another super chat from Houdat. We appreciate that. $2, wide receiver's hands are just decoration. Put them on the Christmas tree. Man, yeah. couple of drops today. Emmanuel Henderson had a drop. Took a couple bad throws from Austin Mack earlier in the game. Um, there was a throw to Cole Adams that he probably could have caught, but it was like behind him, kind of had to spin around. But... Yeah, man, the wide receivers haven't really gone off like I thought they would. Now, that's in the passing game. Not <laughs> wild wide receivers in the running game have actually looked pretty good. You know, a couple times we've seen those jet sweeps to uh, Kendrick Law. We saw a jet sweep to uh, Cole Adams earlier in the game, who looked pretty good. Uh, we saw a jet sweep to Kobe Prentice, who also looked pretty good, so... You know, we'll get Ryan Williams in. We'll see how he fares, you know, if he's going to get any kind of play. He's coming in in the summer. I think he's still out on vacation now. Um, obviously, you know, didn't sign until that February window. So he's still in high school right now. He's, I don't even think he's on campus yet for Alabama. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how Ryan Williams done, does in that fall camp window. But... Appreciate the super chat, who dat? Thank you. Here's a cheers. Roll time. 
Because they're showing Jalen Milrow again just pissed on the sideline. Smacked his helmet a couple times. If you guys haven't already, make sure you are subscribed right here to the Alabama Football Report. Got 172 people watching. We appreciate everybody joining us here for Kalen DeBoer's first A day as the Alabama Crimson Tide head coach, as Ty Simpson, I believe that is, comes back in at quarterback, fakes the handoff, drops back to pass, and he's going to step up in the pocket and throw deep wide open to Jeremy Bernard. Another catch for Jeremy Bernard, his third on the day. <clears throat> Foodie Austin is asking, what's up with Justice Haynes? I, Justice Haynes, you know, had pretty good, you know, first half. I think they're just kind of trying. Daniel Hill's in there right now trying to get some of those younger guys some run. But a nice pass there from Ty Simpson to Jeremy Bernard for another first down. And they're now down to the defensive 31-yard line. Another pass, and that's going to be a sack. Joseph Ayanata getting beat by, I believe that is, Edric Hill. Man, that dude's so big. Edric Hill just right up the middle beat Joseph Ayanata at that center position. I think Ayanata's still at center. I'll let you know here in a second. As they're showing some replays of kind of some recap, Jam Miller getting his touchdowns earlier. As we're going to get a timeout from the defense here. Jam Miller, seven carries, 77 yards, two touchdowns on the day. See Drake or Patrick Jr. in there on defense, Justin Okoronkwo. In there on defense, Devontae Smith as well. <clears throat> Looks like the crowd's also thinned out a little bit. Still a decent crowd for A-Day. Still pretty decent. Ty Simpson gets the snap here. Going to go deep on the left side and a little miscommunication as they're just cutting away. Terrible camera work. Whoever that wide receiver was kind of sat down and he was about to come back. Ty Simpson was trying to hit him deep. So some miscommunication there. From Ty Simpson and the wide receivers as Nate Oates joins the party here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. I wonder if they're going to be honoring the basketball team at any time today for their Final Four run. Bray Hubbard also in on defense. Devontae Smith. As we get a pass here, to Jeremy Bernard drops it on third and 18. Man, right through his hands. Jeremiah Alexander is kind of also dropped back into coverage there. <clears throat> Which, man, how many drops is that now? Seven, eight? For this wide receiver core, things you don't like to see. Things you don't like to see. I'm going to switch up the pin pole here for you guys since the over under A day, 85,000. Looks like probably didn't hit 85,000, but we got 1,000 votes on the poll, so we do appreciate that from you guys. We're going to go, who do you trust more? If I can type. The offense or the defense? So we're going to start that poll up for you guys. Let me know, vote on it right now. Who do you trust more right now, the offense or the defense? And either we have wrapped up a day or they're just taking a little break, one or the other. They're talking to Kalen DeBoer right now. If they were doing the two halves thing, it could be over. 
we are about two hours in. Really, practice-wise, A-day-wise, the game itself, about an hour and a half. Maybe they're cutting it a little short. Maybe they're cutting it a little short. Well, it looks like they might be wrapping up A-Day. So a lot of things go to, have gone down today. Jalen Milrow did not have his best day. Ty Simpson had a pretty good day. I thought the, the running backs looked really, really well. Um, I thought the offensive line played really, really well. The first team offensive line anyways. And who we saw out there anyways, you know, Jaden Roberts, they kind of Switched it up on us a little bit. He was playing left guard. Tyler Booker was playing right guard at times. Um, as they talk to Jalen Milrow now, as he daps up his head coach. As who that? Coming in with another $5 super chat. We appreciate every super chat that comes in here on the Alabama football report. Yeah, the low point today was the wide receivers. He says, wide receivers keep dropping balls. I'm starting to think they're transitioning. <laughs> Who that? I'll tell you what, man. We're going to do, be doing watch parties for the entire season next year uh, for Alabama. So I really, really, really hope, I really hope you join us because you are funny, man. You uh, have given us a couple really, really funny super chats. We appreciate that, man. Here's a beer. Cheers for you. We'll stick around just for a second to just kind of make sure they're wrapping everything up. Um, but we appreciate everybody that joined us in here today for Alabama's first A-Day under Kalen DeBoer, my first live stream with you guys. So I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me. Like I said, we're going to be doing a whole lot more. We only did the Tennessee game last year. We did the, uh, the playoff game against Michigan last year. Both of those games were a whole lot of fun. Even though we lost against Michigan, that stream went absolutely bananas. Um, and we'll do a whole lot more during the actual season. Hopefully we'll be doing some 50-50 Venmo raffles that, you know, for that Michigan game, we gave away like $700 which is just absolutely insane for our Alabama channel, um, which only has about 1,700, uh, or excuse me, 17,000 subs. And we're trying to catch our Michigan channel as well. They have about 31,000 subs. So it's going to be a while, but I think we can do it. With, you know, doing these watch parties, you know, this coming up season, we'll be doing all of them. So it's going to be a fun, fun time. So if you haven't already, make sure you like today's video. Adam's saying a very underwhelming scrimmage. Yeah, yeah, kind of. The offense, though, you know, looked really, really good in the first half. I think they were trying a bunch of different things in that second half. The wide receivers obviously didn't look very good. Kobe Prentice is getting the A-Day MVP? Over Jeremy Bernard, Jeremy Bernard's also getting an A-Day MVP. So there it is. Your A-Day MVPs, Kobe Prentice and Jeremy Bernard. I think, uh, you know, I might have given it, if you're giving away two, which they did, I probably would have given it to Jeremy Bernard and Jam Miller myself. So we will uh, let you guys no any updates if there are any injuries today. It didn't seem like there were, um, but we will let you guys know if there's any injuries. I'll do a short on it you know, later tonight if some of that kind of stuff goes out. But make sure you are subscribed right here to the Alabama Football Report. I appreciate everybody joining us today. We are going to let you guys go. We are going to drop a Winners and losers from a day video coming out here in about I don't know thirty minutes an hour or so. We'll see. I'm here producing myself, so 
We'll see how long that takes me to do, but we appreciate everybody joining us in here today for the Alabama Football Report. Roll Tide, everybody, and we'll see you next time.